Hi, I'm Pastor Ray Chrisman with the Crowley Seventh-day Adventist Church, and you've just tuned in to a special hour featuring a service here at the Crowley Church. We're located in Texas on 3200 FM 1187, and we just pray that you will be blessed by today's service. If you have a question or a prayer need that comes up, please give us a call on the number on the screen. I mean, the Lord bless you as you join us during today's service. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He devote that sacred head for someone such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself to Thee, to all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. See from his head, his hands,
grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me Sabbath, everyone. Today is officially, in the North American Division, um, Christian Records Sabbath Offering Day. And we don't have that in our bulletin, I notice, but anyway, sometimes churches choose a different Sabbath, and that may be the case here, which is fine. But please do not forget Christian Record in your giving because this is the only offering we receive from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that's why we reps go fundraising all year long because uh, the offering is not quite enough. And uh, we do the work similar to a literature evangelist. The only difference is we give the books away free to the blind and then we go to business people and ask them and individuals too and ask them for donations. And uh, we, uh, I'm so happy to see two of my neighbors here. Did you know our neighbors are here, Diane? <laughs> so good to see you, Gay and Truman. Uh, Lord bless you here today. Um, and uh, it's, it's amazing what uh, coincided here, but uh, we just received this National Cancer Blind Children News Magazine, and we have on the cover a famous young little lady. <laughs> and that is uh, Tabitha uh, Shipley. She's a young lady from Keene, Texas, and she applied to go to camp last year. And uh, they told her, Christian Records said, uh, Dear uh, Tabitha, she, you cannot come because you have to be uh, nine years of age. And she was just eight. And uh, her mother or she or somebody told them, said, Well, Tabitha is going to be nine during camp on, uh, uh, on the 14th of July. 
is her uh, birthday, and they, uh, Christian Records said, well, you can come. And Tabitha, would you mind um, standing here beside me? And uh, tell me, uh, what uh, big city do you live in? Do you know? Keene, Texas. That's right. <laughs> she and her mother moved down there from Fort Worth. And uh, Tabitha, do you, uh, you went to camp and your mother went too. Did you, did you, was that okay with you that your mother came? came? That she went to the camp? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and she helped there, didn't she? Yes. And what was it that you enjoyed doing the most? Well, what I enjoyed doing the most was all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you, there you go. Here's a mic. Would you hold it, please? Now, did you uh, do archery? Yes. And what happened with archery? Well, when I did archery, when it was my first time, I think when I shot the arrow, I think I made a five or a ten. And, and did you get a, did you get something? Yes. What was it? I got a trophy. Yes. It was my very first trophy ever. I've never had a trophy in my life. <laughs> and, uh, did you ride a horse? Yes. Did he go fast? No. <laughs> uh, Tabitha told me coming over here today, we went and picked her up in Keene this morning. She said, um, that horse didn't even trot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but something did go fast. Did you do the zip line? Yes. Did that take the wind out of your lungs a little bit? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Anything else you want to say? You want to go this year? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. Oh, you want to sing a song? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Tabitha. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Tabitha's uh, mother went to check us out, and Christian Record uh, said, yes, you can come if you'll help. And uh, I think Tabitha and her mother had never eaten vegetarian for a whole week. And uh, Mrs. Shipley told me, Julie uh, Shipley said, uh, you know the food? Actually, Will, it was very good. <laughs> and so we were happy to, uh, to uh, hear that great report. Well, there are uh, millions of uh, blind people in the United States. Um, actually, there are, they tell us, there are 25 million blind, uh, not blind adults, but 25 million adults in the United States who are seriously visually impaired. And uh, I don't want to say this, but I, I will truthfully say this. Some of you may wind up totally blind if you live long enough. Uh, you, you can go to any nursing home, and we serve almost all the nursing homes in Texas and the United States with uh, large print and other uh, and audio reading materials that they can listen to. Uh, but there are blind people in every, practically every nursing home in the United States. Anyway, uh, there are 50, 59,000 children under the age of 18 who are blind. And so uh, this, uh, some of you uh, do not understand uh, why I'm excited about Christian Record and people that work for Christian Record, but um, Jesus, have you ever thought of this? That blind people are a people group and Jesus cannot come back to this earth until all the blind people are reached with the gospel and the three angels' messages. Amen? And so that's, that's why I'm still working. Uh, who was chosen long ago? Um, we appreciate uh, Donna reading the scripture text. And may I be so bold as to read the scripture out of the uh, Living Bible 
Uh, 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2. From Peter, Jesus Christ, missionary to the Jewish Christians driven out of Jerusalem and scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. Dear friends, God has chosen you long ago and knew you would become his children. And the Holy Spirit has been at work in your hearts, <coughs> cleansing you with the blood of Jesus Christ and making you to please him. May God richly bless you and grant you increasing freedom from all anxiety and fear. So um, God has chosen you long ago. And we find this letter written by the Apostle Peter when he had come to Rome. The ruler of Rome at that time was Nero, who was uh, one of the uh, worst emperors that Rome had. Uh, by the way, almost all the Roman emperors uh, lost their mind before their reign was over. And historians tell us probably it was that they drank wine out of little lead cups. You know what lead does to your brain. Uh, so I'm glad that you and I don't have to judge Nero. Amen? But there, there are some interesting things that happen in life. But uh, Paul was imprisoned in the Mamertine dungeon and when Peter arrived. And there was a delegation of Jewish leaders who were demanding that Nero put Peter in prison also and uh, imprisoned, in fact, all the Christians in Rome. And Peter determined that he would uh, do his best to prepare God's people against the impending conflict that was coming. And uh, Peter remembered he'd denied Jesus 35 years earlier. And uh, Peter kneels down and prays. He prays for the Christians in Rome. He knows how the devil is going to uh, um, cause persecution of the Christians. The devil hates Jesus and his followers. And uh, Peter has seen Satan's hatred at work many times. Peter himself has been persecuted, beaten, starved, rejected, imprisoned, all because he loves and serves Jesus. The persecutions against the Christians uh, by Nero were inhuman. I don't even want to tell you all that he did, but uh, he lit Christians on fire as torches for his par uh, garden pot parties. Um, some were tied to, to the, his chariot and dragged through the street or other chariots of some of his men. Some were fed to the lions, some were drowned, some were beaten to death. Paul doesn't, uh, Peter doesn't stop praying because his communion with God affords him his only hope and security. And so after his prayer, he turns to his helper, his right-hand person and Christian helper and friend, Silvanus, and they write, and you can open your Bible to 1 Peter. I'll read another version here from the New King James Bible. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Those are all little countries that are, that were where the country of Turkey is today. There aren't very many Christians left in that area, but in those days there were lots of Christians there. Um, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Peter packs an amazing wealth of Christian truth into this greeting that he gives there in 1 Peter about the saving acts of God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And he writes uh, about the results of God's grace and how it brings peace into our lives. And Peter wants God's people to know that God has chosen them and what it means to be chosen by God. God wants us to understand that he has chosen us to be on his team. Today, 
we're seeing historic things happening. I, uh, I used to love to watch the news, especially uh, Walter Cronkite. <laughs> that dates me, uh, I, I know. But how many of you remember Walter Cronkite? <laughs> Some of you do. Anyway, uh, he was a great man, but um, uh, I sort of religiously um, watched the news. That was uh, one, uh, one uh, um, habit that I had, one of the sidelines, one of my uh, habits um, and fun things to do was to watch the news, but I don't like to watch the news anymore. Uh, you can ask my wife. I've quit watching the news pretty much um, because all we hear about is about crime, murders, even sexual slavery, political murders, wars on every continent, and uh, persecution of Christians. How many of you know there's a Christian pastor in Iran imprisoned? We need to pray for that man every day because they beat him. They beat him. They're, they're not nice to him. And we're praying that God will um, um, get those leaders to release him. They can with a word if they want to. But these same kinds of trials uh, the church faced back then and greater trials and persecution was going to uh, come upon the Christians during Nero's reign. So Peter's trying to prepare the Christians for that. And uh, let's uh, look again at this text. It says that, Peter says that uh, these Christians there, he calls them pilgrims of the dispersion in Asia, in uh, the country of Turkey, as we would call it today. Uh, these are pilgrims. Um, Another translation says, the Holman Christian Standard Bible says, temporary residence. And the New American Standard Bible, the one I kind of favor, uh, was, uh, uses the word alien uh, to the aliens. He's talking about Christians, but they were aliens. Um, some of you know, I guess most of you know, that I was a refugee in uh, West Germany. I remember here at years ago when we had uh, Katrina and people were uh, refugees from New Orleans. And then later they said, no, don't call them refugees. That's not a nice term. But uh, when I was a child, three years old, I was a refugee from the Russian troops. And we fled and went to West Germany, ran to the Americans. And I like the word refugee because refugee means you are looking for refuge and peace and a new home because the old one is gone. You can't go back. And we have uh, a refugee from uh, New Orleans here in our church now. And we're glad to have her. Um, and we're sorry that happened. But when I came to the United States of America at the age of 11, I was a, I had a green card. I had, I was, and it said on there, alien. I was an alien. I was a permanent alien in this country. And you know, that word didn't bother me. I didn't actually know the meaning of it at first. But later, as I learned English, uh, it didn't bother me because, yes, I was a citizen from Germany that came over here, and I was an alien. An alien, all it means is a stranger, temporary resident, a pilgrim, and the Greek word uh, there is uh, strangers. It means uh, ones away from home. Where I was born is the state of Cilicia, eastern Germany. But now it's uh, the borders changing. Uh, where I was born, that home, is in Poland. And I'll, I've never gone back. I want to go back. I don't know if I ever will or not. But anyway. I'm an, I've uh, been an alien here in America. I was here uh, an alien for nine years. And uh, we made arrangements, went to federal court in Birmingham, Alabama. Then we moved to Texas. And they told us to come to federal court in Houston, Texas. And my mother and I went, first ones in our family. And uh, 
we, a um, whole group of people became U.S. citizens, but we told them we would not swear, German Adventists do not swear even legally to uphold the Constitution. We will affirm that we will uphold the Constitution. And the judge had my mother and me to affirm that we would uh, live by the laws of the United States and the Constitution. We affirmed that. And we did it separately from the whole group. But I was 19 years of age. And let me tell you, I was a citizen of the United States and I was a citizen of Texas. And I wasn't born here, but I got here as quick as I could. <laughs> I was reborn here. And uh, that's the way it is with us Christians. We are not citizens of this world. That's what Peter's trying to say. The Christians had been driven out of Jerusalem and they were in Turkey now, Asia, and all those areas. And um, Peter says, you're not citizens of this world. Uh, they lived far away from home. They kn knew, however, that they were citizens of God's kingdom. There's a pastor, uh, Pastor Dexter Thomas, a blind man who works as the Seventh-day Adventist Disabilities Coordinator in uh, Florida. And he knows what it's like to live as a pilgrim in several ways. Dexter was born on the twin island republic of Trinidad and Tobago. He's the seventh in a family of eight. And just because he was blind, Dexter was often mistreated in school. He was treated as if he was brain dead. By the way, one of the things some people do when they meet a blind person is they start yelling at him. And blind people are not deaf, they just can't see. Anyway, so uh, he was treated that way. Uh, but about his early school years, Dexter says, blindness was a real evil thing to me. It was evil because I grew in a culture where blindness meant you didn't have a brain. To be blind meant you were belittled. You were made to feel small. And I hated the weakness and feebleness that came along with feeling uh, and being identified as blind. Time has proven, however, that Dexter is intelligent, creative, successful, and yet because of his blindness, Dexter at times had to live like a pilgrim in the sighted world. Because God selected him, however, to be one of his chosen ones, Dexter lives as Jesus' ambassador, and he's a pastor now for people with disabilities in Florida. Peter points us up and away from this uh, life on this planet. Um, life today, you can live today like you are an ambassador. We are to represent Jesus. Our home is with Jesus. Our message is about Jesus. Our goal is to live with Jesus, and therefore, nothing but Jesus matters. Amen? Not only are we chosen to be uh, Christ pilgrims living as aliens in this world, we are special in another way. Please notice in verse 2, it says, uh, uses the word elect, as found in the New King James translation. And uh, this elect is kind of like predestination. There was an uh, uh, African-American preacher one time down the south, he didn't have that much education, but they asked him about predestination. And he said, to me, it's a very simple thing. Um, the devil is always voting against you and God is always voting for you, and you make the deciding vote. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, well, God has elected everybody in this world. He has chosen everybody. But it's up to us to choose to be the elect. The elect, actually, in the Greek, uh, electos, means uh, select, chosen, Favorite, chosen one. How do you like to be God's favorite one? God's chosen. It's a privilege, isn't it? Peter is saying that uh, all Christians are Christ-elect, his favorites and special people. And these Christians living in Asia already knew that. They'd already been persecuted, and they knew Jesus was still guiding them and with them. 
and God's angels were with them. These men had abandoned their secular society. They had left their homes, and uh, they knew they were citizens in God's kingdom. They were living as aliens, and Peter pointed them to the true home in heaven. There's nothing quite like feeling uh, the feeling that comes when you're special. Now, Danny, a young boy, uh, remembers growing up in Chicago's South Side, and he lived just two blocks from Chicago's Midway Airport. And uh, the kids uh, would play baseball there on the streets. And uh, they had a rule that if the ball was hit, uh, and was in the air and a car came by, the batter got to hit again because they didn't want to die for catching the ball. So uh, this was a, one of the rules that they had. They, they made the good rules for street baseball. Another ru rule was that Bobby and Mike were always the captains because they were the best and everybody wanted to be on one or the other of their uh, teams. And Danny was never chosen first. He was shorter, and he was slower, and he was clumsy. Sometimes he was not chosen at all, but usually Danny was needed in the right field. And he beamed with pride when his captain called his name. Uh, but Danny could see that some of the smaller boys, uh, they had tears in their eyes when they were not chosen. But you and I, are chosen by the Lord of the universe through the grace of the, of the Son, Jesus Christ. What an honor, what a privilege. God has chosen us, and we are members of a winning team. Amen? So God, uh, Peter here says that God has uh, chosen us, and second, it is the Holy Spirit who sanctifies them, and third, it's Jesus who by His grace sprinkles us uh, with his blood for obedience. Um, Peter, you remember, um, was chosen by Jesus himself. Let's look at it there in Luke 5, if you have your Bible. Luke 5, 8 through 11. Actually, we're just going to read the uh, last uh, verse or so. Uh, it's about... Jesus going to the lake, and uh, he sees these fishermen, and he asks them to follow him. And, uh, well, first he asks them to uh, use their boat, and he preaches a little sermon. And uh, after the sermon, uh, he says to Peter and to uh, Andrew, uh, go, let's go out and cast the nets out. Uh, and see if you can catch some fish. And Peter said, no, Lord, in the daytime the fish can see the nets and they, they won't, we won't catch a thing. And Jesus said, well, go on out. And uh, the, you know the story, they went out and they caught the biggest catch they'd ever caught. And uh, here comes the verse. When uh, Simon Peter saw this in Luke 5, verse 10, I think it is, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Uh, what a... What a uh, uh, journey this was for Peter. From that day that Jesus chose Peter, he became a pilgrim and a stranger to this world. And Peter ventured further with Jesus than he'd ever thought possible. He left his home in Capernaum. He willingly gave up the fishing business. He believed in Jesus' teachings, and he preached about Jesus. And he healed people in Jesus' name. That was magical. And one time Jesus walked on the water and Peter said, Lord, call me. can I do this too? And Peter went and walked on the water, went to Jesus. And then he saw Jesus one day on the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, 
when he was glorified and he saw Jesus that he was God on earth he saw him in all his glory and Peter made his great confession that Jesus was the Christ and Peter said I will never uh, leave you I will always be faithful to you I will even die for you if necessary of course he, we know that he fell uh, after that didn't we don't we after the uh, during the trial but after Jesus went to heaven Peter never returned to fishing he was a church leader he was the first to baptize God-fearing Gentile Cornelius he became an itinerant preacher he went from city to city preaching in Asia Minor and Europe and now Peter was in Rome and it was dangerous to be in Rome there's a story here about Velma and Betty uh, we don't have to travel to some distant city to be a missionary chosen by God Velma learned this when she shared Jesus with Betty a blind lady who lived in her neighborhood Velma had been helping Betty with her Revelation Seminar Bible studies she was pleased uh, that Betty showed uh, Velma her Braille Bible and other material that had been given to her by Christian record Betty loved the Bible studies she learned what the Bible teaches about the Sabbath the state of the dead and the other truths Velma visits Betty every two weeks and they go over several several lessons together and uh, they have quizzes the exciting day came when Betty told Velma she wanted to go to church with her they attended church together several times and uh, they plan to uh, continue doing that and one of the things that Christian record needs is for volunteers I do about 35 counties here in the area and it's impossible for me to visit all the blind people in these counties I even work uh, uh, Enid Oklahoma and Tulsa and uh, the Rio Grande Valley and I cannot continue this at, especially at my age I know one day I'm gonna have to lay my uh, uh, my key car keys down and uh, stay home and watch the news no I'm not gonna watch the news <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I pray that God is calling other people to do Christian record work in this area and, and right now the biggest thing we need is people to visit blind people and uh, some of them have taken the Bible studies and uh, we uh, need for people to go and pray with with these people and uh, answer any questions that they have um, one thing I want to mention is this has already happened and little uh, Tabitha here uh, she was found by our volunteer in Keene, Texas and uh, this volunteer even made arrangements for her to get to camp last year isn't that wonderful so this is happening and uh, I, I'm so thrilled for that but if any of you feel called to be a volunteer to visit some blind people we have names and phone numbers and addresses so just ask me but we must be pilgrims too this world is not my home Peter is uh, telling us that we've been chosen he declares that we're living um, in an alien country this is not our permanent home its values and goals are opposed to God's values Peter wants uh, us to raise our eyes in faith to see God's eternal kingdom that it's our home and he says in 1 Peter 2 11 and 12 you can read with me that first um, Peter 2 11 and 12 are you there first Peter 2 11 and 12 beloved I beg you beloved I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation Peter has told us that we uh, what we know that we're God's elect God has chosen us by his foreknowledge long ago <clears throat> 
and he knows that we need help. We need the Holy Spirit. You know, the Apostle Peter at the Last Supper, they were arguing, uh, all the disciples, who was the greatest. And Jesus actually showed them who was the greatest. The question is not who's the greatest, but who's the greatest servant. And who was the greatest servant that night? Jesus. And he washed all their feet. And after Jesus returned to heaven, Peter and his disciples, they waited in the same room for the Holy Spirit. And they had argued in that same room just a few nights uh, before. But this time there was a difference. Instead of seeking privilege and power in the first place, they sought forgiveness and unity. Instead of fighting with uh, their brothers, with uh, the son sons of thunder, um, they now were asking each other's forgiveness. They said, I want to be like Jesus. They understood that their hearts had been uncaring before. And so they asked for forgiveness for their anger, their pride. And uh, James and John, uh, they reciprocated. And they asked for forgiveness also. And the disciples felt their need, and they cried to God for his help and the Spirit. And the Bible says they were all in, in one accord, in one place, and what happened? The Holy Spirit came down, didn't he, as a dove. And uh, they start speaking in tongues. And God used Peter that day to preach Jesus in the, on the streets of Jerusalem. And they heard him in their own tongues. And how many were converted? 3,000 people confessed Jesus as their Lord. And they were baptized. And the growth of the church didn't end there. Soon the Jewish leaders uh, feared that all of Jerusalem would become Christian. So uh, we too must set aside, uh, be set aside by the Holy Spirit. And we're told the promise of the Holy Spirit is not limited to any age or any race. Christ declared that the divine influence of his spirit was to be with his followers until the very end. From the day of Pentecost to the present time, the Comforter has been sent to all who have yielded themselves fully to the Lord and his service. And so uh, the question is, do you want to surrender fully and be used of God? And then we're chosen to be, uh, to, uh, uh, chosen for obedience to Jesus. Chosen for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Peter saw Jesus die on the cross. He saw him after he was beaten and how Jesus shed his blood. Jesus had died for Peter, for us, and for the whole world. And God wants us to be prepared for ever, whatever the devil may throw at us. If you will be, you will be ready for whatever the devil throws at you if you have experience with Jesus. If you are chosen by his Holy Spirit, if you're given his Holy Spirit, Jesus will enable you to be obedient by the sprinkling of his blood. Then you will do the same kind of work that Peter did. Not long ago, our pastor Martinez uh, from uh, Christian Record was sent to Puerto Rico. He's the director of the Spanish uh, work for Christian Record for the Blind. And he, uh, during his presentation there, he invited Sister Vasquez to share a personal experience. And she told how on a Sabbath afternoon she was visiting homes in her neighborhood. She knocked at a door, and a voice came from inside saying, Come in. She thought this was strange. She entered, and she came face to face with a blind woman who was in her mid-forties. Sister Vasquez was flustered only a moment, wondering what to say. What do you say to a blind person? And God gave her, uh, and the Holy Spirit gave her <laughs> what to say. She was impressed to ask, can I read a Bible passage for you? And the lady said, yes. And so she read a Bible passage to her, and then she said, may I pray with you? And the lady said, yes. And so uh, she did that. 
And after prayer, she left and said goodbye to this lady, but she couldn't get uh, this blind lady, Edna, out of her mind. And she didn't know what to do, so she called her pastor and asked, is there any material I can use for this blind lady? You know, Christian record is a bigger secret in the Adventist church. We're a general conference organization, but we're not tied into the local churches, I mean conferences, so a lot of times uh, the uh, uh, fact that we have all these services doesn't get around. But anyway, she contacted her pastor, and he didn't know. Now that's kind of strange, isn't it? Christian record was founded in the days of Ellen White. Ellen White says that this blind man, Austin Wilson, in Battle Creek, Michigan, started the Christian Record magazine. That's where we get our name. And she said the church ought to help him in his efforts to get the gospel to the blind. And uh, we've been doing it ever since, since 1899. And yet, some Adventist pastors don't even know what we do. He didn't know. But he contacted uh, the conference, and they told him. And anyway, things happened. And uh, three weeks later, Sister Vasquez received a uh, package from Christian Record Services from Lincoln, Nebraska. She was so excited that that same day, she took the audio book and the cassette player, which we don't have anymore. We now do everything digitalized audio. Uh, but anyway, she took the uh, audio cassette uh, and her player to Edna, her new blind friend, and uh, knocked on the door and said, uh, Edna, would you like to listen to this audio book with me? And Edna hesitated, but finally said yes. They listened for a long time. Then Sister Vasquez noticed tears rolling down uh, Edna's cheeks. She asked, what's wrong? Edna paused and swallowed and said, right before you came, I had to decided to take my life. Because you see, before you came the first time, you know, because I'm totally blind from my diabetes. My husband left me. Then my family and the state took my dearest treasure, my daughter, from me. I did not have a reason to be alive anymore. And now from your tapes, I hear that God does really love me, that Jesus cares for me so much that he died for me. How could I take my own life? I'm not going to do it anymore. I want you to know that, she told Sister Vasquez. And uh, Sister Vasquez had played for her a portion of El Camino a Cristo, Steps to Christ, in Spanish. We love stories with happy endings, but let me tell you another one. There are thousands of people out there that are trapped in the sewer of sin. Sadly, too many of God's people refuse to go to their rescue because it seems uncomfortable and dangerous. Today, God is looking to choose you. He's looking to choose people like Peter who will respond to his election. People who are willing to be set apart for God's service by the Spirit, who are obedient to Jesus, going into all the world to make disciples. God is looking to choose you. He chose you long ago. Are you willing to be chosen?